We are on the way to the MKM Stadium. <laughs> Yo, yo, everyone, welcome back to a brand new stream here on the Max Tiger HD YouTube channel. I apologize about my hair, I've just got out of the shower. Now, um, back to a brand new episode of Tiger's Talk, Tiger's Talk episode 32. It could be 33 by now if I did the other Tiger's Talk from Millwall. However, welcome to this episode, victory in the Welsh capital with Royals racing for three points at the MKM. Now, as we all know, Esther Pinyan got a suspension against Red uh, against against Reading. Mm -mm, no. Um, do, um uh what did that say? Mm. <laughs> um, give me I was not prepared for this, was I? <laughs> Right, I'm not going to show you too much because uh, I'll tell you too much because of some of its team. But anyway, moving on. Biggest part of the show before we get into the games as such. Mm, I don't really want to put it out there, but we all know it happened. We all know Charlie Cresswell is now okay. However... Esther Pinyan to miss out Reading and Watford. So he missed out against Cardiff. He missed out against Cardiff after getting an. Um, so I played against Millwall, got a red card against Millwall, missed out on Cardiff. has confirmed that the club's. Three game ban to be overturned, explained the senior. I do understand the decision, but obviously I'm a bit disappointed. It's a shame that he's not available for the next two games, but we've got a good enough squad to get by. So, realistically, realistically, it's it's not it's not necessarily the best. I'm going to say that. And it's difficult to say whether we, whether Esther Pinyan should have had it overturned. Now, obviously, we all wanted it to be overturned, but unfortunately, we couldn't, considering it was a very, very bad tackle. Now, all the time, I've been saying to referees that they're fucking delusional. Um, realistically, some of them can be. Um, Dean Whitestone, I've already had a fucking grudge, grudge against him, grudge against him, sorry, but for about goodness knows how many years. Now, realistically, it's all down to how we look at things. And half the time I feel that it's controversial enough to say that Esther Pinyan deserves his red card 
and Ahmed Zovic from, I believe, Sheffield United didn't, considering his high challenge on Figueredo. Um, but it really does surprise me that it's a three match ban. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that it's a red card, but it doesn't surprise it does surprise me that it's a three match ban. But they tried to get it overturned. We failed. It is what it is. Um, it's one of those where we just have to look at things and just say, whatever, it's gone now, fuck it. Um, but it's it's going to be difficult without him. I mean, obviously, Estepinian scored eight goals this season so far. Probably one of the top goal scorers, if not the top goal scorer in the championship. Um, so realistically, it's going to be tough without him, especially against Watford, because Watford are going to fucking tear us apart. Um, but it is fair to say that we do, as I've seen you said, we do have the squad depth. We do have the squad depth to overturn the decision of putting Oscar up front. Anyway, big up for FFF, FFMCFC. Fucking hell, that's a lot of Fs. Fuck you. <laughs> nah. Yo, what's up, dude? Hope you're well. I, I am well. Hope you are too. Um... However, that is that. Anyway, back to Cardiff City. Cardiff 2, full-time Cardiff 2, Hull 3 in the Welsh capital. Um, very, very, very good game. Very tight at the same time. We have now beaten Cardiff three times in a row, including the double last season. Um, Regan Slater scored twice in two minutes as the Tigers came from 2-1 down to beat Cardiff in South Wales after going up 1-0 inside four minutes with Demetrius Pelkas. Pelkas scored the first goal of the Liam Rossini era, poking home Jacob Greaves' inch-perfect cross in the fourth minute of the game. Very good build-up play led to the goal. Republic of Ireland striker Callum Robinson, however, capitalised on poor Hull defending once again, defending to, to draw Cardiff level, before turning provider on 62 minutes for Gavin White, former City man, to put the Bluebirds ahead with a back post header. But Slater turned the game on its head once more, first going from outside the area with a low effort into the bottom left corner before arriving late into the box to thumb home Ryan Longman's cross after a 1-2. Another home defeat sees the Bluebirds drop to 18th in the championship, one place above Hull City on goal difference. One before blah, blah, blah. one before kickoff, Cardiff owner Vincent Tan, who was attending his first game in more than three years, confirmed that interim manager Mark Hudson has been offered the job until the end of the season. There was more good news for the Bluebirds, who welcomed back striker Robinson from suspension for the first time since the red card in South in the South Wales Derby, while City's top scorer Esther Pinyan began his three game suspension. But in Estepinian's absence, that, the visitors took the lead after just four minutes. And Greaves, who was playing left back as opposed to his usual, usual position of centre back, had preferably like him at left back because he actually a good, very good one. Whipped a delightful ball across for Pelkas to tap home. The early goal flattened the atmosphere at Cardiff City Stadium. The home fans had only seen seven goals before Wednesday and never more than one in a single match. So. We continued to dominate the first half, if I'm very honest. Chance in the first half. Greg Doxy's deflected shot forced. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. I don't know whether it's a smart save or whether it's just a very good one to keep the score at 1 0 from Ryan Allsop. Um, first half typically fizzled out, as it always does with Hull City, really. Um, atmosphere changed, obviously, rapidly. As Joe Rawls pressured a short pass out from Baxter and fell kindly to Robinson, which was kind of a fucking shithead because we were playing it round at the back. And what did I say to so many times in my vlogs? 
don't pass it around the back because we will fucking lose it. Anyway, that was in the 47th minute before Slater decided to go, you know what, I'm going to take my 50 grand that I got bought for and say, swivel on it up your ass, Cardiff. So, um, Slater turned away from wall, rolls on the edge of the area to find a couple of yards of space and fire low into all sorts bottom corner. 23-year-old completed the dramatic comeback one minute later as Hull worked the ball well down the right and Longman crossed for the arriving Slater to spark jubilant scenes among the travelling fans after a nine-hour round trip to South Wales from East Yorkshire. But it was not to be for the Bluebirds, as Hull recorded another way win and a first victory for a newly appointed senior. Our third win, a wet third away win, and our one, two, tenth point in all away games this season. No, 11, maybe 12. Um, Carly Vincent and manager Mark Hudson told BBC Sport Wales, we didn't play well in the first half, so we spoke at half-time and, second, and started the second half well. Then we were naive at a couple moments in the game and gifted the goal, which was the winner ultimately. We spoke about that afterwards. There's a lot of things we need to learn, but we'll stick together and continue to improve as a group. Whereas Hull City manager Liam Rossini, finally we can say Hull City manager or head coach, without saying interim. I'm just proud of the resilience, the character of the group. First half, I was, I th was, I thought, outstanding. The control, the dominance, and the chances we created. I said we will make mistakes. It's part of the process, but I was so pleased with the reaction to come back and for young Regan Slater to score two outstanding goals. I couldn't be prouder of the group. To be, to be fair, Liam, um, I'm not going to lie. You sound like Brendan Rodgers from about 10 years ago. The, res the character of the group. The resilience. What, where is this coming from? Anyway, moving on. Match stats. 12 shots to 10 for Cardiff over us. Two shots on target for them. Four for us. Two corners for us. Four for them. Six fouls committed for them. Nine for us. For some reason, it's always us with more fouls committed. I don't think I've seen any Hull City game in this past two seasons where it hasn't been us with more fouls. 45% of possession for Cardiff, 55% for us. Thank you, Nightbot, for reminding me to... Thank you, Nightbot. Thank you, Nightbot. I I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Nightbot. Well done. You know how to do your job correctly. Well done. Now, lineups. We went back to the winning formation that beat Blackpool and Rotherham. Baxter, Christie, Figueredo, Jones, and Greaves at the back and in goal with Woods and Seri in CDM, with Doherty, Palkas and Slater in the, in the centre attacking midfield the positions, with Longman all the way up top. Two fans, Cynic and Coyle, come, all coming onto the pitch, with Cynic getting a yellow card after coming on in the 73rd minute, Coyle in the 84th and two fans in the 61st, coming on for Woods, Pelkas and Longman. Don't know why Coyle's coming on for Longman, Mike, but all right. Substitutes were Ingram, Coyle, two fans, Cynic McLaughlin, Fleming and Tyler Smith. James Bell was the referee once again, and 16,387 was the attendance at the stadium. Colwell made an appearance today, uh, last, uh, on Tuesday night with, with Harris and Gavin White. White coming off the bench on, in, to replace Nkunku at the 58th minute. Colwell at the 76th, Mark Harris at the 57th, one minute before Gavin White. Basically at the same time with Roman Sowers and Ojo coming off. Colwell was a doubt. However, still was able to play. Where does that leave us in the table then? That leaves us in, P in pl 19th place. Some have a game in hand, so they will obviously be better off than us. If we beat Reading, um, if we beat Reading on Saturday afternoon, which I'll be going to, they'll be matched a bog for it. And Cardiff, Sunderland, Middlesbrough, Stoke, rather and lose, we will go ahead of Reading. Um, not on goal difference thankfully, because we are minus 13. So, if we win and Reading lose, we can go up as far as possibly 16th, maybe even 15th. I don't know. Maybe if, if our results go our way, we could go up to 13th. 
something. I don't know. Um, or, or even tw- we could go up to 12 here, lads. We could go up to 12 here, lads. If Coventry, Rotherham, Stoke, Middlesbrough, Sunderland, Cardiff lose and we win against Reading, we go all the way up to 12. Anyway, we, we'll cut out the op- that much optimi- op- optimism for now. Um, Watford beat Reading 2 0, so that's obviously going to be a downside for them. Coventry 2 0 against Wigan, QPR lost 2 1 to Huddersfield, Sheffield United lost 1 0 to Rotherham, with Stoke beating Luton 2 0, and Birmingham drawing 2 2 with Swansea uh, Desmond at St Andrews, with Blackpool getting a trouncing by Middlesbrough 3 by 3 goals to 0. Now, This is what you all want to know. Reading. There will be a match day block. Venue. MKM Stadium. Kickoff is at 3 p.m. I follow audio passes £2.50. There won't be a match video pass, unfortunately, for this one, I don't think. Form in the past six games with three wins, two losses, and one draw. We, we can actually say more wins than losses this time. Um, for the first time in about seven games, at least. Now, Previous encounter was Hull 3, Reading 0 in the Skybet Championship, with obviously the, a draw coming on earlier in that se- in last season. Memorable match, I don't actually have one, so I'm going to have to try and fish one out for you in the ne- for the next Tiger Stock. But team news. Um, I need to find the team news again. I've lost it. I found it. There we go. So, uh, wait, did I just... No, I have put it up. I'm so lost today. So, with us to Pinyan still serving suspension, Ryan Longman should lead again the whole attack. While those and Tufan may replace Ryan Woods at the centre of the field, Rosina will not want to make any uninformed changes to his starting lineup. However, he has said there are no injury concerns and no fresh in- injury concerns amongst the group. Meanwhile, Reading goalkeeper Joe Lumley will miss out after suffering an ankle injury during the defeat to Watford, joining Tom McIntyre on the sidelines. Dean Buzani, uh, Dean. Dean Buzanis will come into the side for his third championship outing out of the campaign while Mamadou, Lou, Mamadou Laum appears likely to return in midfield. Yaku Mete and Andy Carroll are also pushing for opportunities in the final third after running through a blank at Vicarage Road on Tuesday night. Reading possible starting lineup is Bu- Buzanis in goal, um, Yaidom, Mbenge, Holmes, Rahman, and Kendrick with Laum, Fauna, and Ince. With Carol and Mate up front as a two. Presumably it's going to be a 4 4 2. Hull City starting lineup. I've gone with, I. Uh, you have, you can't see it. You can't see it. There you go. Better. So, from my predicted lineup, I have gone Baxter and Goal. It's basically the same lineup. Baxter, Christie, Figueredo, Jones, Greaves, Woods, Surrey, Doc, Christy, Pelgas, Later, Longman. Basically the same as Cruz and I. And- Blackpool and Rotherham. For a predicted score, despite the recent optimal, uh, the bed the, 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 um, If I can actually speak, I'll tell you. Um, despite the recent optimism, there is this is now an important match for Reading if they want to avoid becoming embroiled in a relegation battle. While they have the quality in the final third to turn things around, we are, are, I am backing City to record a second successive win in the space of a few days after the win in against the Welsh outfit as i am going to say hull city three reading one i do feel like we can be confident after that cardiff game i do think we can score more i do think we can win this game i would have said 2-1 but then again we've got to go with more goals to celebrate for the lads now that is it however we do have one thing left to do if i can do it or not never mind Actually, I do have something else I want to show you. Now, this is, uh, if I can get it up. This is the ticket sales so far for Reading. These are the only tickets out on sale currently because it is the last game until World Cup. Now, so this is how the stadium looks. The Chris Chilton East stand is almost sold out with North stand obviously being sold out itself. Now, the South stand is 
open to many of you. South S1, S2 and S7 are completely three, free with SW and SE1 and SE, with Southstan S3, S4, S5 and S6 all limited availability, with hardly many seats left. West Stand 2 in the lower and West Stand 11, Northwest as well, all being taken up with West 12 and West 1 only being the ones to stand up in that section. So realistically, it should be a good atmosphere and a good attendance from us with all the East Stand and all the North Stand all gone. With the South Stand an, an exception, as it is pretty much the lowest uh, capacity attendance stand in the club stadium. Anyway, that is the end of this Tigers Talk stream. I really hope you did enjoy. Please, if you did enjoy, please make sure you do smash the subscribe button and the like button so you never miss an upload or a stream just like this. Turn the post notifications on as well, just so you don't do that either. Um, you can follow me on my socials that will be on the outro, so make sure you do that for more updated content, especially on my Instagram. I post a lot more on there than I do on Twitter. Now, match day vlog will be on Saturday. It will be out on Saturday, if not on Sunday afternoon, as always. It will most likely be out on Saturday afternoon, though. Uh, like, on no, Saturday evening, sorry. Um, so, match day vlog will be out on Saturday evening. Um, I don't exactly know when. Um, F1 chat is tomorrow, and that will be on Brazil. And then F1 chat will return next Wednesday, and Tigers Talk will return... I don't know. I think Tigers Talk will... I think Tigers Talk will return after the World Cup. So this is the final Tigers Talk stream. Ta final Tigers Talk stream for the next two weeks. So, uh, or the next three weeks, even. I don't know, however many weeks it is. Um, but that is going to be it for the final Tigers Talk episode this, uh, this November. And I shall see you tomorrow for the F1 chat. And on Saturday evening or Sunday afternoon for the match day vlog of Hull City versus Reading. And then I'll see you the week uh, next week for the F1 chat once again. But for now, guys, I'll see you tomorrow for the F1 chat. And for now, take care and bye bye.